Hi, it's Tim from oraclebase.com. In this video, we'll give a quick demonstration of applying changes to the database using the Liquibase implementation in SQLCL. There are a number of tools available that work in a similar fashion, including the regular Liquibase client. I'm using Liquibase in SQLCL as it's really convenient for Oracle databases. If you're supporting multiple database engines, you may prefer to use the regular Liquibase client. We need to make some changes to our schema. This particular change is made up of three files. The comment line at the start of each file is the file name. This isn't necessary, but it makes things clearer in the video. The first file creates a sequence called tab1 seq. The second file creates a table called tab1. It populates a table with a single row of data. The insert statement references the sequence created by the previous file. The third file creates a function called getTab1Count. It contains a reference to the tab1 table. To apply these changes to the database, we need to make sure the files are applied in order. We create a change log to explain how the files should be applied. We can ignore much of the change log format as it's standard for each change log. The important bit here are the change sets. The first change set has an author of Tim and an ID of 01Tab1SEQ. Both these are just free text. The ID should be unique for all change sets applied to the schema, so you will often see people use a GUID. The change set contains an SQL file tag. We say this is an Oracle script. It references a sequence script with a path relative to this change log script. We want to split the statements in the script using a semicolon as a delimiter, and we don't want to remove the comments. The second change set is similar to the first, but references the table script. The third change set references the function script. Notice split statements is set to false. PLSQL code contains lots of semicolons, so splitting based on semicolons wouldn't work. So this change log represents all the steps needed to apply our change to the database in the correct order, from top to bottom. We could just apply this change log now, but we'd have no idea how this change log relates to others. So instead, we keep a master change log that references all the change logs in order. You may hear this referred to as a master XML, controller XML, or master index. This gives a full description of how the schema was built. The only important bit of the master change log is the reference to the change log file we just created. We use a path relative to the current file. We're now ready to apply the change. Using SQLCL, we connect to the database. We check the user objects view and can see this user has no objects. Typing help liquibase displays the available liquibase commands in SQLCL. LB is a short name for liquibase. We're only going to use the update command here. We run the LB update command, giving the location of the master change log file. We check the user objects view and see our objects have been created. We also have some extra objects. These allow Liquibase to track what change logs and change sets have been applied to the database. If we describe the database change log table, we can see the information that's captured. We display just the ID and file name from the table. We can see the three change sets from our change log. Now we want to make a new change to the database, this time made up of two files. The first file creates a sequence called tab2seq. The second file creates a table called tab2. We create a new change log for this change. This time it's made up of two change sets. The first references the tab2 sequence file. The second references the tab2 table file. We add this new change log into the master change log. We can now apply the master change log in the same way we did before. Liquibase knows what change logs and change sets have already been applied, so it only applies the new change sets. We check the user objects view and can see our new objects have been created. 
We query the database changelog table and we see the two change sets from our second changelog have been applied. There are a number of ways to use Liquibase, but I think this is the most natural way for people who have always used SQL scripts. The change logs look a little confusing at first, but after you've run through this a couple of times it should feel quite natural. Just remember that change set IDs must be unique. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.